Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. All week... <laughs> if you've been watching the show, you know that all week I've been talking about what's going on in Afghanistan. It is a comedy gold mine. <laughs> in that trying to do jokes about it makes you feel like you're trapped deep underground without enough oxygen. <laughs> but today, all the news from over there is wait and see. So I, too, am going to wait and see what else there is to talk about. You know, lighter news like the Delta variant. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're getting reinforcements to fight it because today the Biden administration announced booster shots will be offered to Americans beginning September 20th. Of course... <laughs> big Vax fans, big Vax fans here. Of course, not all Americans are in favor of even one vaccine. In San Diego, a bunch of these uh, folks uh, came out to protest vaccine mandates at a Board of Supervisors meeting. And before we roll this footage, buckle your brain. We should not be spending our time here and our life force energy fighting people who lack critical thinking and common sense, yet want to push a vaccine on us. Do you know what's funny? Saturn is in the same place as it was during the American Revolution of 1776, and you are the Redcoats. That is... Crazy! <laughs> that is the most insane thing I have ever seen or heard. Saturn is not responsible for the American Revolution. <laughs> Mars is. Think about it. Red coats, red planet. If you don't get that, <laughs> you're clearly a Libra. <laughs> this guy's message changed some hearts and minds. And loins. To the men that have shown up, oh, that's been super hot. I've been waiting for you guys to get up here and, and just roar like a lion. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> you get it, girl. You can catch her in the new reality dating show, The Anti Vaxlerette. <laughs> Ryan, will you accept this pathogen? <coughs> Another anti-vaxxer who spoke proved that she's not a threat to society. She's a triple threat to society. I got a quick question for you guys. Do you hear the people sing? Singing the song of angry men. It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. Hey, that was off the cuff. I don't even plan to do that. I don't even sing. Oh, oh no. What happened? Did I break out in a Broadway show tune? Don't worry. That will never happen to you. When you're red jet, you're red jet. All the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. Cool boy. Crazy boy. Easy action. <laughs> More than a woman to me. But the absolute bell of the crazy balls was a man named Matt Baker who opened his speech like this. <laughs> That's the wind. That's the wind of time. That's the wind of history. Okay. Okay, Blob Marley. Uh, pretty sure that's the wind of you tried to whistle and then realized you couldn't and pretended you were imitating the wind. You guys know the Andy Griffith theme song? That's the wind blowing through the bones of Floyd the Barber. <laughs> Facing the crowd. Once the wind died down, Matt's speech got... Pretty intense. Your children and your children's children will be subjugated. They will be asked, how many vaccines have you had? Have you been a good little Nazi? Hail Fauci! Hail Fauci! Hail Fauci! Hail Fauci!
I miss the whistling. <laughs> okay, a little advice. I can see you're passionate. I can see this is important to you, but I just want to remind you of the phrase, you catch more flies with honey than you do with crystal meth. <laughs> and the point is, <laughs> they tilted the country and all the nuts rolled to California, right? <laughs> Because one of these maniacs, one of these maniacs could become the next governor of California. As we speak, Golden Staters are deciding whether to recall California Governor Gavin Newsom, seen here yelling, bring me more pomade! <laughs> Newsom is relatively popular with a 57% approval rating, but that might not save him. You see, recall elections are notoriously low turnout, and the rules are really strange. If Newsom gets 50% or more of the votes, he stays in office. But if he gets 49%, the new governor will be whoever among his 46 challengers gets the most votes, even if no rival gets a majority. So, who could be the next governor of California? According to one poll, the front runner is 29 year old YouTube influencer Kevin Pafrath. What up, Callie? What kind of policies do you want to see me enact? Hit me up in the comments. <laughs> like and subscribe. Bye. <laughs> Pafrath. Pafrath is a Democrat. But last night there was a Republican debate which featured an interesting moment for former gubernatorial nominee and man who's somehow whiter than his shirt, <laughs> John Cox. In the middle of the debate, Cox was interrupted. I want to give a shout out first to my John fellow. Cox, you've been there. This man. San Diego Superior Court. He was served legal papers while he was debating. It's the most embarrassing delivery. It's the most embarrassing delivery in a debate since Abraham Lincoln ordered takeout. Uh, Abe, I got a pizza for Abe Lincoln and crazy bread for Mary. <laughs> really? Really? Mary Lincoln fans, I didn't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> in other right-wing nut job news, the feds are still in hot pursuit of the insurrectionists of January 6th. And I'll tell you all about that in tonight's seditious Roundup Roundup. They've done incalculable damage to democracy. <laughs> First up in the correctional corral, Michigan resident and roid rage unibomber Logan Barnhart. Barnhart was caught on video beating a Capitol policeman. But it's not the first time he's been on camera because he's also appeared shirtless on the cover of romance novels. Reminds me of when the Shah of Iran was overthrown by Fabio. Investigators were helped by Barnhart's huge presence online where he posts numerous videos of himself working out and modeling on the book covers of raunchy novels like Step Brother Unsealed, A Bad Boy Military Romance, Crash and Burn, A Sin and Tonic Novel, and Lighter, named after what he's going to beg the judge to make his sentence. <laughs> Next at the Insurodio, Capitol writer Michael Aaron Carico, seen here modeling for Chiquita Banana? <laughs> Carico was arrested and charged with several counts related to the riot thanks to video evidence of him in a crowd singing the words, the land of the free and the home of the brave from the Star Spangled Banner, then looking at a camera and saying, hey, Nancy, go f yourself. <laughs> okay, it's an interesting choice. People normally just yell, play ball. But trying to overthrow an elected government is just Carrico's day job because he's also working as an actor who even has a page on IMDb. For people trying to evade the law, IMDb stands for I am dumb. <laughs> According to his page, Carrico's latest role is Brad in the upcoming film Christmas Down Under. Maybe he'll spend Christmas Down Under, or maybe he'll end up with the top bunk. Finally, on the seditionist roundup roundup, we turn to Edward Florea, seen here in a social media post sponsored by Coca-Cola. 
technically. Oh, yeah. Takes a second to land. Really good one. I really like that. <laughs> technically, Fleuré didn't actually go to the Capitol on January 6th. He encouraged the rioters on social media. But this year, everyone's been working remotely. <laughs> Korea has been arrested and pled guilty for making threats online against Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock. But he wasn't even very good at being very bad. On the far right site Parlor, he posted, Warnock is going to have a hard time casting votes for communist policies when he's swinging with the <laughs> fish, which is a horrible threat and a horrible misquoting of The Godfather. <laughs> I'm going to make him an omelet he can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Daniel Radcliffe.